my pleasure to give the floor to my colleagues, my friend, Ibra uh, Kami, that uh, I ask him to uh, present this new project for us that is uh, called Quantum. Uh, can you hear me? I was, uh, I was in a parent-teacher association meeting about eight years ago. And there was a discussion about safety and the internet and the usual tropes of uh, parental fear of technology and I don't understand the technology and my children do and all these things were, were being discussed as usual. And there were some teenagers in the room. And a conversation developed where the teenagers were saying that really they didn't see the problem. They didn't see what their parents were worrying about because they had the perfect control of their relationships online. They were per perfectly comfortable in their situations. And they trusted the people they worked with. And there was outrage. The parents were saying, yeah, you trust them, you don't know these people, etc., etc." And the conversation developed and developed and developed. And as I listened to it, I realized that it wasn't just a generational conflict that I was hearing. There was something else going on. The word trust was being used in the room in very different ways. What the 50-year-olds and 60-year-olds and 40-year-olds in the room understood by trust seemed to be completely different to the understanding that the kids had of the word. And that's what started this project, WIRED. WIRED is a project, it's a Horizon 2020 project, which aims to look at, um, oops, sorry, we'll go back one. It aims to look at this issue. Things are changing because of these digital technologies. People's understandings of key notions like trust, like privacy, like communication, <coughs> like the word relationship, appear to be shifting. They appear to be changing. And over the years of looking at it, I've become more and more convinced of that. And so we created this project, basically to look at this issue. What the young people understand. We always know that we always... Ken Robinson, have you heard of Ken Robinson? The guy who talks on TED Talks a lot about creativity talks a lot about how kids are really creative and they're really creative and we should harness that creativity and so on and so forth. This, this picture sums up that idea. We see a box, a child or a young person sees something completely different. It might be a mountain, it might be a volcano, it might be a transmogra fire, it might be something they can't even articulate. Very often they can't articulate what they're seeing but they're seeing something different. And our problem is that as researchers, and as parents, and as policy makers, and as teachers, we just don't know what's going on. We can look at them, they look at us, there's a certain amusement, but there's a communication gap. We just don't know. And as researchers, an awful lot of the time, we're just looking in the wrong places. <laughs> And this picture makes you think. The problem is that most research isn't helpful. Most research treats people like bacteria. It looks at them from outside. It doesn't involve them. It doesn't really focus on what their perceptions are from inside. It defines the questions before asking the people involved what those questions ought to be, or what they might be. But most of the time, the research assumes that there is a steady state. We can look at it, it's like a photo, we can look at it from all sides, and then write our interpretations and our reports. But unfortunately, technology is a moving target. How many of you remember MySpace, for example? Yeah? I did a doctorate. And by the time I finished it, there were double the number of people on Facebook than there were when I did my interviews. The penetration of Facebook had completely changed 
the whole situation had changed. I got depressed. I told my supervisor, I can't present this thesis because it no longer represents any kind of reality. They said, it's okay, you did the research. Go ahead, present it. So I did. But, but the problem is very acute, particularly with technology, but it's also acute with young people because young people are also a moving target. They're continually developing. You interview a young person today, and in six months, and their answers will change. Their perceptions will change. So we have a problem with the assumption of steady state, but we also have a deeper, more profound problem, which is that most of the time, we don't actually listen. We ask them some questions and we go away. We steal their voice, and then we forget what they actually said. We produce our own interpretation of it. And most of the time, that's not only unethical, it disempowers the young people that we talk to, and most of the time our conclusions are missing the point. So, we decided to do a different kind of project. And this, this is a picture on a wall near my home in Somerset in the UK. If you understand the term free range, it's usually used to describe chickens that um, are allowed to roam free and eat wherever they want and do whatever they want and that makes for healthier, happier chickens. I'm a vegetarian myself. Um, but anyhow, it does make for healthier, happier, more tasty chickens. Free range children, well children are free range, young people are free range, they, they go wherever interests them, they explore wherever interests them, and they, and they are as diverse as any other social group. We make a further mistake when we assume that they are homogenous. In this project, we're aiming to make it as diverse as possible. That theme of multiculturality that you have here in team is particularly important in this project, and we'll be focusing on it a lot. But the problem is, youth, have, youth doesn't have a voice, so what can we do about it? How can we change that? Our aim in this project is to make them more than subjects. They're going to be the researchers. We need them to need their perspectives and their perceptions in order to to find the research, to start the research, to plan the research, and so on. So we're going to use other approaches like citizen science, like action research, community projects, but it's not us, it's them that are going to do it. And giving them control, take my control, <laughs> giving them control is problematic. A lot of people, when you say, I've been through this in other projects, when you say, we're going to give autonomy to the young people, we're going to let them run things. They say, how are you going to do that? What will happen? It's like herding cats. They all run off in different directions, and you get no results. And you won't be able to interpret the results, because one won't be over there, one will be over there, etc., etc. But you have to do it. You have to give them that kind of freedom in order to get some kind of useful result. The problem is, how do you solve it? A lot of researchers would rather that their subjects were more like these people, sheep, easily manipulated, easily moved around, easily uh, studied, rather than cats who run off everywhere, they have their independence, their autonomy, etc. But the problem is, if we give them that freedom, what happens if they don't know how to use it? What happens if they don't know how to do research? What happens if the kinds of things they want to uh, explore are problematic? from a social perspective. For example, what if they want to explore their sexuality and they're working in a Catholic school? What kind of freedom is that? How can we work with that? So there's a problem for the project that too much freedom can be problematic because they don't have to make use of it and that disempowers them. But too little freedom equally, as we've already said, disempowers them. Our solution is based on the notion of the zone of proximal development the idea that there is a space between the knowledge that you have and the knowledge you need to attain, and that space is where learning can take place, and that place is where freedom actually is to be found. And we, in this project, we have to talk about it still, because we're starting today, the project begins today. We see the, in the, in the proposal we have, we see the role of the project staff as facilitators as the providers of spaces, frameworks, scaffolding for this process to take place. 
that's perhaps what's most different about this particular project. And the way we're going to do it, the arc, if you like, of the project, is a cycle where we, we network young people together, we promote dialogue between them about what interests them, about what they think is important. We then facilitate them doing the research. They define their projects. They decide what they're going to look at. We facilitate the process. And then we facilitate their process of interpretation of what they've done. And then we start again. And we'll do that again. And then we start again. And the idea is that this cycle of research avoids the problem of the moving target. Instead of taking one photo, the idea is to reach a space where the European Union disappears, at least in funding terms. For the UK partners, that may be more. <laughs> <laughs> but we carry on. We carry on in our cycle of research. And we hope that all of you out there who are not actually in the consortium may wish to join us at some point. And you're very welcome to do so. And on the right here, you have inclusion, diversity, inclusion, diversity, inclusion, diversity as a constant note running through the project. And if you don't have that, you've got nothing. I'll stop now. I'll just tell you who the partners are. We have the University of Salamanca here in Spain. We have the Moods organization from Austria, who will be focusing particularly on the issue of diversity and inclusion in the project. Um, we have Oxfam Italy. Youth in, I can't remember the E, can I look? Is, is youth? youth for Exchange and Understanding. Youth for Exchange and Understanding, sorry, the white spot there. Uh, but they, they're based in Belgium and they're all over Europe. We have early years who are based in the UK, working with uh, younger children. We have Pi Global, who are a youth uh, organization. We have, uh, they're in the UK, but we also have staff here in Spain. Um, Doha schools or Doha schools from Turkey, Tel Aviv University, and the boundary of Doha too, which is in the UK, which, is, which I represent. And there's not much more to say because we're just beginning. But please look for us on the web. We'll be there very soon. We'll have videos. We'll have all sorts of information about the project as it evolves. And we look forward to participation. If you have young people who might be interested in participating in this project, Please get in touch with Fran or with us. Thank you. Um, I declare this project open. <laughs> <laughs> and also the conference open. This is the crazy days in Salamanca. Come on to the conference. <laughs>